Aye, uh, it's light. It's light just now. We had two players come off the park on Saturday with Knox. It was kind of forced substitutions. So, no ideal then now. It seems to be... We seem to get one back and lose another two or lose three. So, it's not an ideal time now. Um, but, obviously, there's a free week next week in terms of semi-final. So, just try and patch boys up and get them out in the park on Saturday and hopefully... Um, we have no game next weekend. It's going to stand us in good stead going forward. In terms of sitting bottom of the league, no any different for last week, no any different for match day one. We need to go out and we need to try and win the next game of football. I keep saying the same things every week, but aye, we just need to go out and win the next game of football. Win, lose or draw. My attitude's not going to change coming into work on that Monday morning, Sunday morning. My attitude's not going to change. I'll come out and I'll still try and win the next game of football and that's the way I'm trying to get the boys the same mindset. Um, takes you a point closer than where you were before the game, but really in reality you needed three points, so takes you a point closer, but again, it's we've just got to concentrate on ourselves, we've got to look at the internal noise and what we can affect and it's the next game of football, so clean sheet, a point closer, but ideally it's not what we wanted, we wanted the three points. Yeah, I, I think I think that's a a kind of you're looking at the external external kind of Ross County Rangers there. I, I can't control that, so I don't really put too much emphasis on that. I think Hearts are sitting third in the league for a reason. I think they're at this point in time the third best co- uh, team in the country by a considerable distance. I think Stephen's done a really good job at Hearts, um, and I think they're one of the best run clubs in the country. Their fan base is phenomenal in terms of the investment they bring into the football club. Anne and Andrew and all the people within Hearts have done a fantastic job of growing the, the football club. So it's going to be going to be a difficult game, uh, game because they're, they're getting a lot right off the park and they're getting a lot right on the park. And when you've got that alignment between upstairs and downstairs and the success of upstairs and downstairs, it's... It, it, it leads to massive progression and development within that club and that's kind of where I see Hearts. I think it's really, really hard game of football but a really, really progressive club that's moving in the right direction. No, belief's still there and I think I'll make sure the belief is there. Whatever the outcome is in match day 34, 33, 35, 36, I'll, we'll keep that belief in terms of you can only focus on yourself. You can only focus on yourself. There's no use looking elsewhere. And what I would say is <clears throat> most most weeks, most weeks I can gauge a change in them in terms of, there's been the odd occasion where it's a wee bit flat, but most weeks the players within the changing room have been really, really positive. They've tried to create that positive environment within the changing room. There has been occasions, don't get me wrong, after certain games where it's been a wee bit flat, but that's normal for the position you find us in as a club, it would be easy for that group of players to come into their work, go through the motions, become complacent and kind of look at not being here. I've never found that with them, to be fair. They've always been really, really positive as a group, stuck together. And I believe we'll get that for, match, for now onwards. We've had it most of the season, but that'll no change when lose or draw on Saturday. Um, I think the game here was a wee bit closer on the game away, albeit the scoreline away from home. Away from home, we kind of went into that in the back of a, a difficult result. Um, we kind of changed how we'd approach the game. We sat in that low block. We never really posed too much of a threat, if I'm honest, in terms of the game at Tynecastle. Um, we were unlucky not to get something from the game. But on the flip side of that, I probably would have said we didn't deserve a lot from the game either. The score of goal, I think it was V Vargas. We don't get pressure on the ball. We drop the runner. He scores 1-0. But that scoreline was probably a wee bit closer and not a true reflection of the game because I don't think we posed too much of attacking threat ourselves going there. At Livingston, as with most teams, we will, we'll, it's going to be a competitive game of football, but it's my job to find that balance between the last performance at Tyne Castle, which wasn't overly great, and the performance here, which was very good in stages for large moments of that game. It was very good, so it's up to me to try and find that balance between both performances. But you're right in what you say, over the course of us being in the Premier League at the last six years, We've won won games of football, but most games of football have been fairly close.
It'd be huge, but you've got to flip that as well. You've got to be pragmatic here. That could be 12 points. So I'm not really one that focuses on what's happening between Rangers and Ross County or that game. I'll focus on what we can control in it. I was going to say 4.45, but it's a good chance it's closer to 5 o'clock. Um, and at 5 o'clock, we'll have a wee look at... We'll regroup and we'll assess where we are in the league and how the other results went and how they played their part in um, the league table. So I'll not really put too much emphasis on that, I think. I've got to put all my energy, positivity into how do we go to Tynecastle, how do we try and affect that game and how do we pick points up in that game. And that's, that's really where my main focus lies, not really in what happens elsewhere. I think, <laughs> go back to my interviews in the Cup stages, I think I've been very, very vocal on this and I've, I've said it for match day one, I've said it pre-season friendlies, it's going to be a difficult year. This would probably rank up there with the biggest achievement from this group of players and staff at the club, myself included. Um, it was surpass top six finishes, it was surpass cup finals um, and I was very vocal on that at the start of the year. I knew how difficult a season it was going to be. Huge, but it's a big ask, I'm no... I'm no delusional here. It's going to be a big ask for us to do that, but we can, we can. Um, I personally, probably not take too much gratification from that on a personal note because I think it's a, a team game in terms of the staff would be due a lot of credit and, uh, and that's all staff, not just the coaching staff, but the players would deserve huge credit there also. But it would make, <laughs> it'd give me a, an easier summer, so to speak, but for me, Trying to keep Livingston in the Premier League is the sole objective. It has been the sole objective from match day one. Um, and it means a lot to the community and the fans. But again, I'm, I don't want to sound here delusional because I know how challenging the season's been for everyone. Not just myself, not just the staff and the players, the fans, the local community and the wider staff at the club. The non-footballing staff at the club, I know how challenging the season it's been.